Hello and welcome to my Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at advanced rulings referring to attack and defense modifiers. This is a guide that was actually developed by the Yu-Gi-Oh! organization and I'm going to be giving my take alongside this as well, just giving my overall opinions as someone who's played the game since the original Metal Raiders when that was released. So it says, I finally rest and watch the sun rise on a grateful universe. This is the long-awaited new and improved attack and defense modifier guide. Things always become less fun when math and numbers are involved and even they have had trouble with attack and defense modifiers. This guide will cover the main different ways of modifying a monster's attack and defense and how these interact with one another to better help players understand how their cards work. For a set of rules as complex as these are, their sources are not always easily accessible, especially outside of Japan since these effects are fairly well represented in competitive play. It is an important part of the game to show. So organization of modifiers and attack and defense modifier is any change to a monster's printed attack and defense. When describing a modifier effect and determining how it works, there are three main questions to ask. One, is it a simple addition or subtraction, or is it setting a new value? In other words, is a monster's attack and defense increasing or decreasing to a new value, or is its attack and defense becoming set to a determined value? So for example, there is a certain card that requires certain monsters to become a thousand attack points. That is the example they're trying to go with with this. Effects that increase or decrease use the words gain or lose respectively, while those that set a value can use words like double, half, switch or become to describe what they do. Two, it is, an active, is it an activated or non-activated effect? An activated effect is applied only once when it resolves, but that effect will linger for a certain amount of time or even indefinitely. You think of Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind, that when that halves it keeps that halving for uh, even when it leaves the field. A non-activated effect is something that is continuously applying while the effect is active, if that effect stops applying, the monster no longer receives the modification. And three, does it change the current or original attack and defense? Most effects change a monster's current attack and defense, but its original attack and defense are the values printed on the card. However, some effects change the original attack and defense so that the new values determined by those effects are treated as the original attack and defense, as if they were printed on the card. Other modifications are applied to that new original attack and defense. As you can see, there are two opposing answers to each question, so with all combinations considered, Considered. That means any given modifier can fall under one of the following eight theoretical different categories, but really there are six of them. One, activated effect modifier that increases or decreases the current attack and defense. Two, non-activated effect modifier that increases or decreases the current attack and defense. Three, activated effect modifier that sets current attack and defense to determined value. Four, non-activated effect modifier that sets current attack and defense to determined value. Five, activated effect modifier that sets original attack and defense to determined value. And six non-activated effect modifier that sets original attack and defense to determined value. The missing two combinations are activated effects that increase or decrease original attack and defense and non-activated effects that increase or decrease original attack and defense. These don't actually exist. There aren't any cards that increase or decrease original attack and defense. Someone will bring up thousand energy and triangle power. Everyone else has forgotten these exist. These just suffer from having ancient text but don't change the original attack. So in terms of interactions. Now that we've seen what kinds of mod modifiers there are, we need to know how each of them interact with one another and what happens when you apply one type of modifier to a monster and then another. Konami's perfect rulebook goes into considerable detail. We have over tra translated of the 2017 version at that link and the rules involving attack and defense modifications start on page 156. While the 2017 version isn't the most recent one, the updated rules in the newer versions don't affect how modifiers work. I'll go through the different types of modifiers listed above and how they interact with other modifiers with examples then cover some of the special cases. Each section that follows will cover the different types of attack and defense modifiers as well as special exceptions. Relevant sources from the OCG card database are linked at the bottom of each section. Not all examples have database rulings but the information comes from other reliable sources including the perfect rulebook. If you've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links or Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel you can also expect cards to work as described in this guide. Some information has also been corroborated with code Army's OCG customer service office. So in terms of applying any effect that increases or decreases attack and defense, for the most part, regardless of what kind of effect was previously applied to a monster, increases and decreases are simply added to the existing value. This is true for both activated effects and non-activated effects. Note that a monster's attack and defense cannot be lower than zero. Decreases are still applied to a monster's attack and defense even if they would become lower than zero, but will be cut off at the zero point. The leftover amount is still stored, so 
that it needs to be taken into account when you further increase a monster's attack and defense. For example, the effect of Forbidden Lance is applied to Harpy Lady, to Harpy Girl, which reduces its attack by 800. Since Harpy Girl has an original attack of 500, its attack becomes zero. If Blade Fly is then summoned, its effect increases the attack of Harpy Girl by 500. The attack of Harpy Girl becomes 200, not 500, considering those extra 300 points have to be taken into account. It says here that the ruling was made from the case of Malakoda, Netherlord of the Burning Abyss, versus a zero attack monster. In terms of the second criteria, applying applying an activated effect that sets attack and defense to a determined value. These are activated effects that half, double, or switch the current attack and defense of a monster or make it become a specific value. Despite the variety of words used, they really all mean the same thing. Mechanically, a card like Limiter Removal does not actually double a monster's attack, but rather it sets its attack to a value that it's twice its previous attack. If the effect of Limiter Removal is applied to Cannon Soldier's attack, for example, it is making its attack become 2800. When these effects are applied, they overwrite any previous modifiers, even if they use those modifiers as a reference point to determine the new value, such as halving or doubling a monster's current attack. So those previous changes to the current attack and defense are not reapplied. These effects essentially lock in or freeze the attack and defense at the newly determined value. If the new effect stops applying after a certain duration, a continuously applied effects modifiers are reapplied. However, changes that were made by previous activated effects to the current attack and defense are never reapplied, as they have been wiped out forever. Example 1. The effect of Aquajet is applied to 7 colored fish, which increases its attack to 2800. After that, the effect of Armored B is applied to that 7 colored fish, so its attack is halved to 1400 and remains there for the duration of the turn. When the effect of Armored B expires, the attack of 7 colored fish will be 1800. The effect of Aquajet is not reapplied. Example 2. Apollosa Bow of the Goddess has an original attack of 3200 from its own effect and has used its effect that makes it lose 800 attack three times while on the field, losing a total of 2,400 attack points. So its current attack is 800. If Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess, is equipped with Moon Mirror Shield and battles a Cyber Dragon, the effect of Moon Mirror Shield activates and sets Appaloosa's attack to 2,200. After damage calculation is over, its attack returns to its original value of 3,200. The 2,400 attack previously lost by its effect is then no longer reapplied. Example 3. Barrel Dragon is equipped with Mage Power so that its attack and defense are 3,100 and 2,700. And if a limiter removal is activated from the hand, the effect of mage power immediately adjusts as a result of limiter removal being placed in the spell and trap zone, so the attack and defense of Barrel Dragon becomes 3,600 and 3,200. When limiter removal resolves, it doubles that 3,600 attack to 7,200. Afterward, limiter removal is sent to the graveyard, but Barrel Dragon's attack remains 7,200. Even if more spell and trap cards are placed on the field, or even if mage power is destroyed. The attack remains 7,200. Note that Barrel Dragon's defense will drop to 2,700 after limiter removal re resolves and will continue to be affected by mage power. In the original example, if Barrel Dragon is somehow not destroyed by limiter removal, its attack and defense would be 3,100 and 2,700 again once the turn ends. However, as these effects do not change a monster's original attack and defense, they also do not affect altered original attack and defense. A previously applied effect that changed a monster's original attack and defense will still apply. For example, the effect of Shrink is applied to Power Code Talker and its original attack becomes 1150. When the effect of Power Code Talker is activated during damage calculation, it sets its attack to double its original attack, which is now 1150. So its attack becomes 2300. After damage calculation, its attack returns to the value of its original attack set by Shrink, 1150. Once the turn ends, its original and current attack return to 2300. And at these links, you'll see the various rulings. So you've got the one for Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess, versus Moon Mirror Shield, one for Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind versus Tragodia, you've got one for Power Code Talker versus Shrink, you've got one for Forbidden Droplet versus Grand Marshal Daiza, and you've got one for Breaker the Magical Warrior versus Inverse Universe. The third ruling comes down to applying a non-activated effect that sets attack and defense to a determined value. These are continuously applied effects that change attack and defense to a specific value. Once these effects are applied, any previous non-activated increases or decreases are reapplied to the attack and defense. There are exceptions to this rule and those are noted in section 6 as special non-activated effects that are not always applied last. Example 1. Relinquished is equipped with Black Pendant so its attack is 500. If Relinquished then activates its effect and equips Curse of Dragon, the attack of Relinquished becomes 2000 with 1500 defense and then the 500 attack from Black Pendant is reapplied. Its attack becomes 2500. Example 2. War Soldier is 
losing 1000 attack from its own effect, so its attack is 1000. If Boar Soldier is equipped with Megamorph, its attack becomes 0 or 3000. The effect of Megamorph makes its attack become 1000 or 4000, but its own effect is reapplied and it loses 1000 attack. When these effects are applied, any increases or decreases previously applied by an activated effect, or any changes to a monster's current attack or defense set by an activated effect will not reapply. However, the old modifiers are only masked and don't disappear entirely. If the new effect stops applying, the first effects modifier will magically reappear. Example 1. The effect of Rush Recklessly is applied to Luster Dragon which increases its attack to 2600. If Luster Dragon is equipped with Dark World Shackles, its attack and defense becomes 100. If Dark World Shackles is destroyed before the end of this turn, the attack of Luster Dragon becomes 2600 again until the end of the turn. Example 2. The effect of Half Shut is applied to Luster Dragon which halves its attack to 950. If Luster Dragon is equipped with Dark World Shackles, its attack and defense becomes 100. If Dark World Shackles is destroyed before the end of this turn, the attack of Luster Dragon becomes 950 again until the end of the turn. When two non-activated effects are applied that each set attack and defense to a determined value, whichever effect was applied most recently will take effect. If that new effect then stops applying, the first effect will be reapplied. Example, player A has lower life points than player B, and player A controls a goblin attack force equipped with their own Megamorph, so the attack of that monster is 4600. If player B equips their Megamorph to that goblin attack force without any change in life points, its attack becomes 1150. If player B's Megamorph is destroyed, the attack of goblin attack force returns to 4600. So we have three rulings here, one is for heroic challenger Excalibur versus Megamorph, the second is for flash assailant versus Megamorph, and the final one is Megamorph versus Megamorph. Section 4, applying an activated effect that changes original attack and defense. Effects that change a monster's original attack and defense treat the new value as the original attack and defense, as if it were the value printed on the card when these effects change a monster's original attack and defense. Previous increases or decreases are reapplied, whether they are activated or non-activated. Example, Flame Swordsman is equipped with Salamandra, which increases its attack to 2500. If the effect of Shield and Sword is applied to Flame Swordsman, its original attack and defense becomes 1600 or 1800, but the effect of Salamandra is reapplied, so its current attack becomes 2300. When an activated effect changes a monster's original attack and defense, previously applied activated effects that set the monster's current attack or defense to a determined value are wiped and not reapplied. Example 1. The effect of Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind is applied to Black Rose Dragon, which halves its attack and defense to 1200 and 900. If the effect of Shrink is applied to Black Rose Dragon, its original attack is halved to 1200, and its current attack will start over from there, so it remains 1200 as a result. When the effect of Shrink stops applying at the end of the turn, the attack of Black Rose Dragon returns to 2400, while its defense remains 900. Example 2. Copycat activates its effect targeting Dark Magician and its current attack and defense become 2500 and 2100. If the effect of Shorten's Shield is applied, the attack and defense of Copycat each become 0. When the turn ends and the effect of Shield and Sword stops applying, the attack and defense of Copycat switch again, but its effect is never reapplied, its attack and defense will be 0. If these effects are applied while a non-activated effect is setting attack and defense to a determined value, that previous effect is reapplied once the original attack and defense is changed. Example 1. Ill Blood is equipped with Dark World Shackles and its current attack and defense are each 100. If the effect of Shrink is applied to Ill Blood, its original attack becomes 1050, but the effect of Dark World Shackles is reapplied and its current attack remains 100. If Dark World Shackles is destroyed this turn, its attack becomes 1050. Example 2. Red Eyes Black Dragon is equipped with Megamorph and its attack is either 1200 or 4800. If the effect of Shrink is applied to Red Eyes Black Dragon, its original attack becomes 1200. The effect of Megamorph is reapplied, but since this effect is determined by the monster's original attack, the attack of Red Eyes Black Dragon will either be 600 or 2400. When an activated effect changes a monster's original attack, any previous changes to the monster's original attack are wiped, even if the new original attack is based on the old modified original attack. This is important if the old change was permanent, but the new one is temporary. Example, the effect of Lost Wind is applied to Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, so the original attack of Clear Wing Synchro Dragon becomes 1250. Indefinitely, if the effect of Shrink is applied to that Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, its original attack becomes 625. When the turn ends and the effect of Shrink stops applying, the original attack of Clear Wing Synchro Dragon becomes 2500. And the rulings for this are Relinquish vs Sword and Shield, second is for Blackwing Girlwind the Whirlwind vs Shrink, the third is for number 96 Dark Mist vs Shrink, and the fourth is for Lost Wind vs Lost Wind. Section 5 is applying a non-activated effect that changes original attack and defense. As with the activated 
activated effects that change original attack and defense. Previous increases or decreases are reapplied. Example, an access code talker gained 3000 attack from its own effect. If it is equipped with unstable evolution, its original attack becomes 1000 or 2400, but the boost from its own effect is reapplied, so its current attack will be 4000 or 5400. Previous changes that result from an activated effect setting a monster's current attack and defense will remain active, so that the current attack and defense of the monster does not change, even though the original attack and defense may change in the background, so to speak. Example 1. Drill Warrior halves its attack with its own effect. If Drill Warrior is equipped with Solidarity Sword of Poison and attacks an opponent's monster, its current attack remains at 1200, even though its original attack becomes 4800. Example 2. The effect of Forbidden Droplet is applied to Firehand, halving its attack to 800. If Ojama Country is activated, Firehand's original attack and defense switch, but its current attack remains 800, its original uh, and current defense becomes 1600. Similarly, if a monster is already being affected by a non-activated effect that sets its current attack and defense to a determined value, and then its original attack is changed by a non-activated effect. The current attack and defense does not change even though the original does. Example, Insector Dragonfly is equipped with Dark World Shackles, so its current attack and defense are each 100. If it is then equipped with Insector Gigamantis, its original attack becomes 2400, but its current attack and defense remain 100. If the monster's original attack and defense was previously changed by an activated effect, the non-activated effect changing its original attack and defense will apply. Example, the effect of Shrink is applied to Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, and its original attack becomes 1750. If Ultimate Conductor Tyranno is equipped with Unstable Evolution, its original attack becomes 1000 or 2400. If Unstable Evolution is destroyed before the end of the turn, the attack of Ultimate Conductor Tyranno remains at 1750. There are two rulings for this. The first is Solidarity Sword of Poison versus Megamorph, and the second is Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess versus Solitary Sword of Poison. Section 6 is Exceptions, applying a special non-activated effect that is always applied last. As mentioned in Section 3, certain effects that set a monster's current attack and defense continuously are always reapplied last as new modifiers are introduced, breaking some of the rules established above. Even though they can be described in the same way, non-activated effects that set attack and defense to a determined value, it is not always clear why they work differently. Firstly, I'll talk about the effects that half, double, or switch a monster's current attack and defense continuously. Since these have no counterparts in Section 3, making them easier to categorize, as I also mentioned above in Section 3, activated effects such as limiter removal don't truly double a monster's attack. They set a monster's attack to a value that is twice its previous attack and freeze it. The same is true with cards like Inverse Universe, which switch a monster's current attack and defense. The special effects discussed in this section actually do double, half, or switch current attack and defense, and any new modifiers are then applied to the previous level of modification, but the special effect is then reapplied to the new total. Example 1. Number 17 Leviathan Dragon and Super Crash Bug are on the field. The effect of Super Crash Bug switches the current attack and defense of Number 17 Leviathan Dragon to be 0 attack and 2000 defense. If the effect of Number 17 Leviathan Dragon is activated, its attack is recalculated with the effect of Super Crash Bug being applied last. The attack and defense becomes 0 and 2500, not 500 and 2000. If Super Crash Bug leaves the field, the attack and defense becomes 2500 and 0. Example 2. Injection Fairy Lily attacks while Mirror Wall is on the field. Once the attack is declared, the attack of Injection Fairy Lily is halved to 200. During damage calculation, if the effect of Injection Fairy Lily is activated, its attack is recalculated after its effect resolves. It atta its attack becomes 1700, which is 3400 halved. Example 3. Red Eyes Black Dragon is equipped with Megamorph and the Wicked Dreadroot is on the field, which halves the current attack and defense of all other monsters on the field. The attack of Red Eyes Black Dragon is either 600 or 2400, while its defense is 1000. The things get more complicated with activated effects that set attack and defense to a determined value applied while these special effects are applying. It was previously mentioned that when an effect like Limiter Removal or Blackwing Gull, the Whirlwind resolves, any previous non-activated modification cannot be applied. However, cards like Mirror Wall and the Wicked Dreadroot will reapply. Example 1. The effect of Mirror Wall is applied to a Cybernetic Magician that attacked, so its attack becomes 1200. If the effect of Cybernetic Magician is then activated, applying to itself, 
health, its attack becomes 2000, but the effect of mirror wall immediately reapplies and halves that amount. So the attack actually becomes 1000. Example two, Black Garden and the Wicked Dreadroot are on the field. If Alistair the Invoker is normal summoned, the effect of the Wicked Dreadroot is immediately applied. So the attack and defense of Alistair the Invoker becomes 500 and 900. The effect of Black Garden then activates and halves the attack of Alistair the Invoker to 250. Now the effect of the Wicked Dreadroot is reapplied to the newly determined value and halves it further to 125. The defense remains 900. If the Wicked Dreadroot leaves the field, the attack of Alistair the Invoker becomes 250 again. Lastly, we have the effects that continuously set a monster's attack and defense to a specific value rather than half, double or switch it. As with the cards above, these are always applied last and supersede virtually all other effects that would modify attack and defense. While their effects are applying, they or the monsters their effects are applied to are effectively immune to any attack and defense modifications. One thing to keep in mind again, however, is that because they apply continuously, they simply mask the previously applied modifiers rather than remove them entirely. If the new effect stops applying, the old effects are reapplied. Example one, Water Dragon, Apple Magician Girl and Chocolate Magician Girl are all on the field and the attack of Apple Magician Girl is zero due to the effect of Water Dragon. If Magicians Unite is activated, targeting Apple Magician Girl, its attack becomes 3000, but the effect of Water Dragon is immediately reapplied and makes the attack become zero again. If Water Dragon is destroyed this turn, the attack of Apple Magician Girl becomes 3000 again. Example two, if Clear Vice Dragon attacks Red Eyes Black Dragon, Clear Vice Dragon will have 4,800 attack during damage calculation. If tie strike is activated during damage calculation, the attack of clear vice dragon becomes 2,400, but the effect is reapplied and becomes 4,800 again. Example three, the wicked avatar and Salomon great Heatlia are on the field and the attack and defense of the wicked avatar are each 2,400. If the effect of Salomon great Heatlia is activated, targeting a nightmare phoenix in the graveyard and the wicked avatar on the field, the attack of the wicked avatar becomes 1,900, but immediately reverts to 2400. During this turn, if the effects of the Wicked Avatar are negated, its attack will become 1900 again and its defense becomes zero. Example four, Victory Viper double XO3 and an option token are on the field. The pendulum effect of Perform the Pal Turn Toad is applied to the option token, which switches its current attack and defense from 1200 to 1000 to 1000 and 1200. However, its attack and defense immediately readjust to be the same as Victory Viper double X03, so they become 1000 1200 and 1000 again. The rulings here are for Mirror Wall versus Acts of Despair. The second is Palladium Oracle Mahad versus Honest. The third is Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind versus the Wicked Avatar. Fourth is Perform Val Turn Toad versus Gradius Option. And the fifth is Salomon Great Violet Chimera versus Vampire Frowlion. Section 7 covers activated effects that work like non activated effects and vice versa. A monstrous effect that sets its own current or original attack and defense upon being summoned is generally considered a continuous effect because it does not act. Activate. However, these effects behave more like activated effects with respect to the interaction rules covered above. They are only applied once when the summon is successful and are not continuously applying thereafter. Naturia Beetle is similar as well, although its effect is not applied upon being summoned. Example 1. Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess has an original attack of 3200 by its own effect and has used its effect to decrease its attack by 800 twice for a total decrease of 1600 attack. If the effect of Shrink is applied to Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess, its original attack becomes 1600 and the decrease of 1600 by its own effect is reapplied making its current attack zero. At the end of the turn the original attack of Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess becomes zero. Example 2. Naturia Beetle has its attack and defense halved by the effect of Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind so its original attack and defense are 200 and 900. If Pot of Greed is activated the effect of Naturia Beetle is applied and its original attack and defense switch its current attack and defense will be 1800 and 400 meaning the effect of Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind is no longer applied. In the above examples, although the first effect of Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess and the effect of Naturia Beetle are continuous effects, they behave more like previously applied activated effects that change original attack. They are closer to something like Lost Wind than Solitary Sword of Poison. Conversely, they are activated effects that behave like non-activated effects such as Spiritual Beast Apelio and Aroma Garden. The activated effects resolution is to begin applying a non-activated effect, which then takes effect 
effect for a certain amount of time. These cards have effects that activate and resolve, but they apply to increased functions like a non-activated effect. Example, the effect of your spiritual beast Apelio has activated and resolved. Your ritual beast Ulti Gaia Pelio with 3700 attack attacks an opponent's defense position Kazajin, and during damage calculation, the effect of Kazajin is activated. The attack of spirit ritual beast Ulti Galepio becomes zero and damage calculation occurs with that value. After damage calculation concludes, the effect of Kazajin stops applying and the effect of spiritual beast Apelio reapplies so the attack of ritual beast Ulti Galepio becomes 3700. The ruling here comes from Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess versus Shrink. And the closing thoughts here are, there is a lot here to take in and understandably there isn't an easy topic for people to grasp in one reading. The most important thing when playing your cards is to identify which type they are based on. The examples above, I tried to include some of the popular favourites such as Forbidden Droplet and Appaloosa, as well as the better known trivia cards, since those will be the cards that generate the most questions. Fortunately the ones that are more complex are also the ones that are rarely played. So thank you very much, I've seen a lot of the detail and there's been a lot of work gone into this. Any questions about any sorts of rulings please put those in the comments down below. I'll be happy to try and answer them as best I can and make sure to click into the video on the end screen it really helps support my channel if you watch further videos.